of an Indian company called BOG. BOG writes, as it writes, calls itself. It stems from something that real world in, in uh, Bath, Peter Gabriel's label, was trying to get off the ground a couple of years ago. I was approached by this guy who said, there must be a way in which we can provide an easier way for people to license the right to use music on websites. And this guy did the rounds of all the labels, trying to sell his idea into these labels. And I'm rather afraid that they took his idea and used it themselves. Because that is essentially the basis on which BMG rights deals is now being operated. And if I backtrack slightly here to cover something that you may well all be aware of, but let me just do it anyway, just in case, is that when you are peering music to use on a website, because there are visual images on the website, you are clearing the right to reproduce the music in synchronization with those visual images. All right? Sync rights, as we call it. And what you're needing to clear, to get permission for, is not only the sound recording, but the songs that are on that recording. And these are probably owned by completely different people. And so there are two places where you have to go to get your permissions. This is quite cumbersome. It isn't like if you wanted to record somebody else's song, you just go to POS for Music and the MCPS part of POS for Music and ask for a license. And providing that you're not mucking about with the song or making major changes or anything, you get a license, you record, you release that song. Right? It's different with, it's with visual images because there is no one stop body that clears synchronization rights. You have to go to the individual rights owners. So say your songs are published by Sony ATV and you are signed for records to Island Records. Right? They're completely different groups, completely different companies. So if I wanted to use your recording on my website, I'd have to first go to the record label, Island Records, and say, can I use your recording? And then I'd have to go to your publishing company, Sony ATV, and say, can I use the song? The only kind of rule of thumb between the two is that they split the, the, the price down the middle. So whatever you get for your song, you'll get the same for the master. It's, it's, it's split down the middle. That's just for the ease of negotiation. So if a £1,000 is available, £500 will be for the master recording, £500 will be for the song. You can imagine how websites and companies like Yahoo and Google could not get their head around the idea of having to go to two different places for approvals. They wanted to go to one stop. They wanted to go to a single place where they could just apply for a license and it was done. And they wanted it done that same day, right? And no, I, when Yahoo first came into this country, I, had, I advised them on mechanical royalty rights. And I remember the chief executive looking at me and saying, you cannot be serious. You are telling me that I have to go around every single company and get this clear. I'm not doing it. And it, it, you know, he, it was a concept that was completely alien to them. They, they, they just couldn't understand how anyone could possibly do business on that basis. So these rights deals are, if you like, an answer to that problem. Companies like BMG are saying mostly to independent artists, those who have recorded their own uh, records and therefore own their own masters, they're saying, why don't you sign to us? You can sign your master rights and your publishing rights in the same place. Instead of having a separate publishing deal and a separate recording deal, they're both the same deal. Right? Which means that if you sign to one of those, if somebody then wants to use your, your music with in an ad or on a website, they only have to go to the one place to get those approvals. And so that immediately kind of halves the time and the speed with which you can turn things around. Right? So on the face of it, all good news, right? But can anybody think of why this 
may not be brilliant for the artists. Because there's some artists that aren't going to go to them, so they're going to be a disaster because whoever wants to take their music and take some of them and sing it, they're more likely to go to people it's easier to do it from. You have a very interesting take on this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, there is that danger. I hadn't thought of it like that, but yes, there is that danger. Um, the enough take up, the take up isn't enough yet to make that actually um, a, a, a problem. Um, I was thinking of it more from a creative, I suppose, perspective for the artist. Why might that? Why, why might it not be brilliant for control? There is that danger. I mean, one of the reasons why we, we are quite keen to have records and publishing in different places is because you can have somebody else fighting your corner, as it were. So say your record label is absolutely keen that your recording is used as the anthem for the next Tory party conference, and you are dyed in the wool revolutionaries and really dream of agreeing to this, then your publishers place and it's all geared towards being easy and one stop and you know everything going through the same day it comes in. The chances are that those kind of issues will not emerge. You know, there's nobody going to be putting their hand up and going, actually, is this really what this song should be used with? Is this what this artist, this writer would really like to happen? There's no check and balance in there. Now, Alexi, who runs the NT Right, is probably screaming at me at this point, going, ah, you know that we have creative controls in our contracts. And yeah, they do. You know, they, they are supposed to ask, ask the, um, the writers and the recording artists for permission. But you can imagine if the whole aim of this is to get a fast one stop shop, the circumstances in which they have to ask for approvals are very narrow. So they tend to say, we only give you the right if it's a violent film, or if it's, oh, they, they seem to think that if it's um, sanitary towers that you also have approval over it. That goes into the contracts quite a lot. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, so it's politics, sometimes violence, pornography, those kind of issues. But that might not be enough. I mean, say you were, you know, Chrissy Hine, who is a well-known vegetarian, and somebody wanted to, you know, put it in a big photograph. You know, that would be not something that necessarily you would be able to get permission, you know, get, get approval on. So I am watching these rights deals quite closely, really, because I want to see how they are actually going to work in practice. Um, there is another potential downside with this. Uh, I had a, an artist who was signed to B&G for publishing and happened to make his own uh, records. He was making very good money from his publishing because they were getting lots and lots of sync deals for him. He was getting ads and films and he was, you know, early enough to, to live on from his publishing. And then the MG target started to turn the screws on him and said, well our new model is, you know, recordings and songs. We need your recording rights. And he didn't want to give them recording rights, but there was almost a blackmail involved in it. Almost. I can't say they were blackmailing him, but it was well, we won't be able to push your songs if we haven't got the master right. And all of a sudden, this poor bastard was facing a situation where he might lose all his income from these nice sync rights because he wasn't giving master rights. The master deal they offered him was crap. And he and I had this really difficult conversation about it because, you know, I, I knew he shouldn't be doing this deal. And he knew he shouldn't be doing this deal. But he did it because he felt he had to. Right? And it was an unmitigated disaster, because basically they were just using his publishing money 
to pay for the plugger and the press man and the, you know, it was not doing him major services. He was hoping that it would, you know, get better support from them because he was putting all, you know, he's doing what they wanted, basically. And for him, it was pretty much an abject failure. So, I am watching these deals quite closely as to see how they work in practice, but if you're thinking about, you know, where you might make money in this industry, and I presume you're all here because you want to make money in this industry, or creative industry generally, think about that one-stop shop, because there is something in there. There is definitely an advantage to being able to clear all rights in one place. So maybe there's a business model in there which says, I'm going to take the better bits of this, but I am actually going to be artist friendly, and I am going to be. In, a, in other words, if anyone is going to create the new business models, it's people like you in this room, because you have the energy and the, uh, the enthusiasm to do it. So look around you, look at these label services, what are they doing? Can you do something that's better or more tailored to the artists? Can you take the comedian model and build it into something else? Just you know, think about what's working in all of these and see if you can actually make something better. That's what Centric did when, when the Centric guys came up from here. Um, they saw a gap in the market. 